supporting in Drupal Commerce. Um, how many people have an active Drupal Commerce 2 site launched live out there? But in development, boom. I have it on my local computer. I played with it, and Composer yelled at me, and I got mad. I promise you we're working on that last part. Well, Drupal as a whole. Um, but that's a whole different discussion. Um, my name's Matt Glamen. I'm a senior Drupal consultant at Commerce Guys. I am the co-maintainer of the 2.x branch and various other Drupal Commerce modules. Um, I wrote the Drupal 8 development cookbook. And tomorrow, if you go to the sprints, I have two copies I'm giving away. Mark, you need to fight for it. I said dibs. You said dibs on the internet. Um, okay, so it's record. <laughs> so come to the sprints tomorrow. This is some of the unofficial swag I want to give away. I said I'm sitting at my house, and I figure what better way to do it than somebody who shows up at a sprint. If you make it to sprint, where can you get the book? Um, pack, so it's published through Pack Publishing. So you can go on Pack Pub or Amazon or any of those sites. If you have mapped by Pack, it's like their subscription ebook service. You can read it for free, and that's fine with me. Like I didn't write it to get money out of it. I wrote it to kind of just share knowledge and say I wrote a book. Um, I'm also the author of ContribKanban.com. If you've used that or not, it turns Drupal.org issue queues into Kanbans to help with sprinting. And I have a PHP Storm plugin called Drupal Test Runner, which executes the run script for you, in the run test script inside of PHP Storm to help lower the barrier to getting people to run course tests and all that, like at sprints. Why, so why is reporting important? Um, merchants want to know what products they're selling. Merchants also would like to know who they are selling to, right? You have something, how is it doing, who is buying it? Um, you also want to know how your marketing campaigns are going. People are buying it, you want to know who your customers are, but you want to know how they're getting it, and if you're advertising to them, how effective is it? You need this so you can do data-driven business decisions, right? You want to execute a way to grow your business, but you want to make sure you're doing it in a proper way. Because bad decisions waste money. I mean, experiments are good, but you want to experiment as best as possible. And one way to do that is through insights and intelligence. So merchants need raw data that tells you how your site's performing. What's my raw revenue? What is my e-commerce site making me? Um, you know, in comparison to how much it costs to actually run it. Um, you need to draw insights from that data to make the business decisions. Cool, you know you're making $3,000 a month, but where, how, why, and what? Um, then that's where report, reporting tools come in and they help you solve those problems so you can make a decision. So I'm going to go over um, reporting in Drupal Commerce because this isn't just like a Drupal problem. It's just a general, that's the new age we live in is data. Everything is about data and making decisions. It's not necessarily your stack, but what you do with that data. And we have a few solutions in the Drupal Commerce platform that allow you to receive that reporting and make business decisions. First, I'm going to talk about Commerce Reports. It's the native reporting solution for Drupal Commerce. It uses raw data and queries your database. So it takes data from that order that was made in Drupal Commerce, reads that table, and then gives you reporting information. It's currently in alpha status. Um, it's probably beta because I hacked on it over the week before this. Um, it creates basic report entries. It's lacking a user interface right now. And I'll explain that in a little bit why. Um, I am the maintainer. Commerce Reports was actually my foray into the Drupal community four years ago. Um, it was when I first stepped up to be a co-maintainer of a module. Um, and I want to give a shout out to Chris Rockwell, who's not here, but the recording will capture this, because he took my Slack rant of the architecture and implemented it as a patch. So it's because of him, the initial brain dump was actually turned into code, and I am very appreciative of that, because I feel like I am horrible at explaining architecture, especially in Slack. So, what's great about Commerce Reports? It's free. You download the module, you install it, you get some reporting. It doesn't it cost any additional resources, no services. It's on a budget until you blow your database and size, and all of a sudden you have a store manager trying to create a tax report over the past two years while people are trying to place orders on your front end. So it's a give or take. Um, you know, I wouldn't recommend Commerce Reports in a highly trafficked website, but I feel like at that time you are using different components. Um, so it has its benefits and drawbacks. I know people have actually set up 
like database clones that they run this on and not their actual live site. So that way they can do like end of year reporting. Um, how it helps, and this is specific to the Drupal Commerce 2 one. So over here is a, doesn't look that great on this big screen, but an ERD of Drupal Commerce. And Drupal itself stores in a normalized fashion. You know what that means? It's everything has its own table and relates to itself. Instead of one big table that says everything, it's this big diagram of things that connect. So what Commerce Reports does is it denormalizes that information so it's easier to query. If you've ever been in Drupal and you want to just like get data about an entity, it's like, we'll query the base table, then the field data table, then the actual field table. The idea here was to provide a denormalized piece of information to make reporting easier, which also lessens the load in the database because it's less tables that have to be queried and makes it easier to export to an external service. Maybe you don't want to use Commerce Reports to build charts, but you want to try to aggregate that data and then pass it through your, to your ERP or some other reporting system. So this helps make it easier to extract your data to some third-party service. Um, you query reports using familiar APIs. It uses entity query. Here's from the order one, where condition, type, order report, aggregate, order ID. I want to know how many orders. Aggregate the mail for account so I can know how many unique new customers I had. Amount number. So anybody that's a developer could go in, write their own custom plugin report, and then be able to display that data. And I've brought up a few times about taxes. And that's where I've seen people get the most use out of commerce reports is because it has hard data that it can read against. It's reading against your current database. So at the end of the year, people will try to figure out how much tax they owe and what, how much tax they collected that they need to pay and help kind of line up all their information. And then here's some screenshots of the initial table views that are so pretty and so useful. Um, they will improve over time, but it does have an out of the box. The top is monthly, so February, January, then December and November. Then it goes into weekly, and then you can also do daily, so you can see a different breakdown. And probably it will, I will be sprinting on this on Sunday, or at least opening issues, so that way other people can start sprinting on it to get a better user interface, maybe a dashboard in there. So the negatives. Like I said, it uses the same database as your store, so if you're looking at your reports and I'm trying to buy an order, all of a sudden my, sec my checkout is like two seconds slower because you're viewing your reports and then I don't convert. Um, I banded checkups so it was just too slow because your database was, instead of serving customers, your database was serving you. Um, creating report types requires code and developer knowledge. Um, so we have it set up, we're using the plugin system. So every kind of report type, you know, order, purchase item is a, is a plugin. So you do have to be a developer. And that was a conscious decision because you'd have to be a views wizard to make a report. And Commerce 1 and for Drupal 7, all I got was support requests like, how do you do aggregation queries and views? How do you do this? How do you do that? One, I hate views. Two, I really, it, it's near impossible to teach people how to build aggregate views. Um, and I think it's still buggy in Drupal 8 even. So I just wanted to take that out of the equation and just provide out of the box um, reports that are there that meet most general needs because there's gonna be other solutions that allow you to have more custom reports. The main thing behind this is you need a generic dashboard to make the client happy. You need to be able to do some kind of back end type things with the reporting data. So that that's its place in the world. Um, because there's things like Commerce Google Analytics. So I'm gonna talk about how you can install this module and it turns on the e-commerce reporting parts of Google Analytics. One of the nice things about this is how many, how many of you run sites that use Google Analytics for your reporting? It's about everybody, right? Isn't it like Google Analytics is on half the web properties in the world? Um, so how it works is it sends data events to the client, and the client being the web browser, where Commerce Reports is on the server side. That's that note. So when you have things that are only on the server side, you're missing user interaction. So that's where Commerce Reports is only really good for revenue information or generic insights because you don't know how they behaved on your site. So Google Analytics can help you kind of bridge that gap. Um, the current status is in dev. There, was, there were six commits made to the dev branch and that's not even like easily exposed on the project page yet. So there's no known plan. It only tracks transaction data and not all the other goodies. Um, 
I talked to Ryan, and I guess we're actually in the process of trying to become maintain, co-maintainers of it. Because as the maintainers of Drupal Commerce, we want to make sure that there's solutions for you. You know, one size doesn't fit all. We want to have a strong platform that lets you build online stores. Um, some good things about Commerce Google Analytics. Well, it's free because Google Analytics is free, except you're giving your data to Google. Um, and this is becoming a bigger topic lately. Like I said, Google has half of the web properties on their analytics system, and you're contributing to it, which then allows them to build a bigger profile of everybody shopping online. Um, and depending on how you feel about that, some people may not be comfortable giving their sales data to Google. Um, we have an Amazon module, and that's what everybody said, like, I don't want to send my, my revenue to Amazon so they know what I'm selling. Why would you want to send it to Google either then, technically? Because they want to sell different products. Um, there's, no, there's no proof that they do that, but that is an area of concern. Um, and there is the Google Analytics 360 suite, which is like their enterprise, so there is a paid version. And there might be a reason you actually need to get that. I have no idea what the pricing is because it's their enterprise solution. I bet it is. Um, another thing is it's on the front end. So like I said, it tracks user interaction. Um, when somebody clicks on a button, when somebody visits a page, when anything happens, you can ping Google events, things that you can't really do in the back end. Like you can't know that somebody scrolled to half a page and then highlighted text on the back end. You can in the front end. Um, for instance, the add to cart form. You can track how people interact with your add to cart form. Did they interact with color swatches more or the drop down list? That's th those are things that Google Analytics can let you harness and do. That lets you build a better buying, buying experience. Um, you do have to set it up, you gotta turn it on. You can't just install this module and go. You actually have to go into Google Analytics and flip that switch. Um, one other thing that I think is neat is you can label your checkout and it helps build this funnel. So when the cart and the checkout interacted with, it, break, it does a funnel or like a funnel analysis. These are screenshots from the current module. I ran a hat test to generate a bunch of different unique scenarios and do some load testing on Drupal Commerce. This is the state of the Google Analytics integration. Um, it shows that I had sessions, but it's not showing that people had add to carts, I did, or that people went to checkout, they did. Um, sessions with transactions, I have no idea whether that's zero. So the module needs some work, but like I said, we want to improve it. Um, if you configure your checkout steps, I didn't get to there yet, but you would be able to see that people entered, what's the out-of-the-box checkout form? The out-of-the-box checkout flow has login or continuous guest, order information with payment, and then review. So here you would see those three steps to see where people drop off. You know, everybody's dropping off at the order information. Why? Is there something on there or people just are checking something out? You know, the sh maybe the shipping rates are too high. That's where front-end analytics let you know where your drop-offs are and to improve, like, okay, shipping's too high, or the user experience is weird, and it lets you make those decisions and those tweaks to make more money, because if you have an e-commerce site, you want to make more money. Um, there, there, it allows you to have social marketing, or social and marketing campaign conversion tracking. I didn't know how to figure it to set it up, so I took a screenshot of the behavior flow, and in some way in here, you could set up sessions with transactions and then see the source they came through and kind of see like, the big topic I see is Pinterest is one of the top e-commerce converters. If you're paying 300 bucks a month to advertise on Facebook, and let's say you're doing $100 on Pinterest and your conversion value is higher on Pinterest than Facebook, should you change your Facebook game to just be brand awareness and push for more conversion from Pinterest? You, you're leaving money on the table and you may not know it until you have data and you're able to draw these insights. Um, so then we get to the negatives. You can't control your raw data. So this is that you're giving it to Google and you can't access that raw data unless you pay for the Google Analytics 360 suite. You cannot query it directly. You have no guarantee on the SLA of the availability of said data. Because remember, it's free. You're giving, and the trade-off is you get a free product for letting them have information that you're just giving them. Um, so that's actually a, a turnoff I have. I mean, I use Google Analytics for page retracking all the time because it is like the best, so it's the de facto. But when it comes to some of this, that's where things are kind of like, okay, if I really want the best solution, is this it? 
Um, this is the other downfall. People block Google Analytics. They don't want to be tracked, especially now. Like privacy is a big deal, and it's not so much that it's being tracked for user experience. It's the fact that it's Google that we have these big tech conglomerates that know so much about us and can know who you are better than you know yourself through all of your metadata. So users might block Google Analytics using no script, which just kills just about anything, or Google Analytics has their own opt-out browser extension for Chrome and everything else. So if somebody blocked Google Analytics from loading and went to your store and bought something, that revenue is not in Google Analytics because it never got sent. So there's benefits in client-based reporting and then there's that downfall, which is they can't block the server from sending data somewhere. So there's these trade-offs that you have to consider. Um, custom reports require specific knowledge. I worked at a marketing firm, and I know that there's people that like were trained. There's like a certification process to know Google products and a big market out there of people that are like gurus with analytics. I couldn't figure out how to generate some of the reports, and I'm sure there's somebody who makes 300 bucks an hour and can sit there and make the most beautiful dashboards in Google Analytics. I know this because I saw one that took customer sales and temperature for a ski clothing company to see who was buying at what temperatures most and found out it's actually the Southwest and mild temperature, like that. So there's huge things that you can get out of data, but at what cost will it be to get that out of your system? And the new thing that everybody's talking about is the EU GD GDPR. It's not really happening here, but we do have a huge Drupal Commerce space overseas. A lot of people use us. And this new privacy policy that's being enacted in the EU says that you can call and say, can you look up my, this is my understanding of it. I can say, do you have information on Matt Glamen? If they can type in my name and get a hold of me, I can say, purge all my data and they have to purge it all, or at least anonymize it in some way. There's concerns around Google Analytics and this. Google said that they will be in their best compliance, which could be true. I, I mean, you might accidentally send, my fear is what if you accidentally send customer information, they can actually shut down your account and you lose all your data um, currently, but how, there's no way for you to delete that. You don't, you, unless you pay for it, you cannot delete or control your data. Um, and it comes to people wonder, worrying more about the whole metadata thing and your, your footprint across different sites. So some people might be weary of Google Analytics just because of privacy restrictions. Your privacy policy has to be updated to match theirs because I do do age analysis, demographics, all of that, which is good. It's good insights, but you just have to be aware of some of these wonderful implications. So commerce reports, and then Commerce, Google Analytics are the two module solutions that are free, install. Um, one thing that I wanna talk about is a product that we actually built at Commerce Guys called Lean Commerce Reports. Um, so Lean Commerce Reports is a plug and play sales dashboard for your Drupal Commerce store built by the Drupal Commerce maintainers. Um, so it's a reporting tool for the platform. Um, you know, Commerce Reports is a reporting tool for the Drupal Commerce platform. Commerce Google Analytics, you just shove Drupal Commerce data, like transaction data, into there. It's not necessarily tailored for it. And we realized that there, this is a problem space. So we created a service. Um, it uses client-side and server-side event tracking. So the revenue box are all generated once the order's been placed. It went through, you collected money, so we send it to our system and say, here's the revenue for it. It's off-site stored, so it's not in your database, kind of like what Commerce Reports does, but it's off-site. The big win here is that by taking client-side data, we can see how many people converted. What's your conversion rate? Out of all the page views on your site and the unique sessions, take that divided by converted orders. I know my conversion rate. So if you run a marketing campaign and all of a sudden for one month your conversion rate kicks up, you kind of know, we did something right. Or you know, you do a pricing change and all of a sudden it goes up or it goes down. Let's say you did a pricing change or you changed the site. All of a sudden you notice they start to go down. You can make adjustments and recover your, call, your, your lost sales. Um, we have, like I said, out-of-the-box reporting so you don't have to configure it, you know, top products. We do have a conversion funnel. Um, channel by traffic, so like I said, you wanna know where your customers are coming from and how they're converting. We do have the full reports and the filtering and CSV export because we know that people want 
the CSV because there's people that are crazy magicians and excel in all that and can do some crazy things or they need to pass it off to some other service. Um, we're doing cart and checkout funnel analysis right now. It's not configurable, but the end idea would be that it shows all add to cart events, people that went to the cart page, and then each step of the checkout when they dropped off. We kind of just lump checkout all into one at the moment. So the idea would be you see all, how many people added to the cart? So they're just browsing and never made it to the cart page. How many people didn't leave the cart page? They just kind of got there, did their you know shipping estimate and disappeared. So that way you can see, you know, you can hopefully find your pinch points and then build, you know, adjust your web, your website. Um, the channel by traffic. So that way again, we'll be able to help you drill down and figure out the value of, like I said, Pinterest versus Facebook. You know, who is bringing bringing you bigger conversions? Um, and then revenue by store. This is cool. I like this a lot because it's not in commerce. Google Analytics isn't going to give you this. Neither is any other reporting tool. It could. I won't say never. Um, out of the box, we support the multiple store aspect of Drupal Commerce 2. Drupal Commerce 2, you have multiple stores. You have your US store, your Canadian store. Um, in other setups, it's actually different brands. They have one Drupal Commerce store, and each different brand that they own has their own products, and it's like you know five websites in one. So this way you can break down. We have it where you can restrict all these reports to that certain store. So you can see your overall company health. Then you can drill down like, how's the US doing? How's Canada go doing? Um, our first private beta has a bunch of franchises. Franchises, So each franchise can view their own reports, but then corporate can see how the health of the entire system is going. And it's always evolving. Um, we do the work, you don't, which is one nice part about it. I took some screenshots from our back end. Uh, we don't have these in our dashboard yet, but tax reporting, um, you know, coupon codes and promotions. Commerce reports will support, you know, these kind of things. Google Analytics, I didn't see a way to track promotions, and I'm sure there is, like I said, I'm sure there is a way. But that's one thing that we want to just provide so that way you don't have to think about it. And, you know, like I said, it's a plug and play sales dashboard. Um, it's a software as a service, and it's actually embedded into your Drupal site. So you can go to like commerce, reports and then like it's an iframe that shows our dashboard and it felt really it's always kind of odd when you pitch a product at a drupal conference because it usually is like i want this module talk about this module talk about how to do something the problem is reporting is hard and we're gonna price this at the thing like 10 bucks a month and the idea is that do you want to spend time writing your own reporting tool filing bugs for commerce reports in views madness, trying to tweak and build what they, the thing that should just come out of the box, so that way you can build a better experience. Um, that's actually how we got our first pri private beta customers. They were, they told that they, their agency they wanted this reporting solution. They're like, it's going to cost you a lot of money, and then it's going to sit. It's not going to get updated every time you want to change. It's going to be this, and so we we're lucky enough to get them on in commerce reports, and so far they've loved it because the agency doesn't have to do this hard stuff. They just get the updates. They can say, hey, the report broke here. We need these kind of reports. We're like, sure, yeah, we'll add it. And they can worry about making that e-commerce platform the best platform out there to help that company grow and become bigger. You know, they're letting that company solve their actual problems instead of the problems of reporting. And that's why we built the product. We wanted to try to help our users of Drupal Commerce have a solution that gives them reporting and insights that they would come to expect if they were on Shopify, Magento, any of our um, competitors, so that way they can do what they do best and make e-commerce sites that help companies grow. So, uh, now we have time for questions. Usually, this has a lot of questions, especially around like commerce reports. Yes? So, just at the end there, are you saying going to deliver a generic tool that everybody can get the same thing or, or, so, lean, or customizable. so lean commerce reports is technically not customizable it's one like you install it we give you your access key and that's it because that that was the end idea it's just something that everything else in drupal commerce you have to customize and set up and make it fit around your data model 
we wanted this to be a solution where it's like you don't need to worry about that. You you should worry about your architecture of your products, your business processes, and all that. Um, As a company, if I have a specific weird report that I want, I could request it. But yeah, you could request. Everybody would get that report. Yeah, well, would. possibly. We're, we're, that's one thing we're feeling on because we yeah, do know there are like. Yeah, working through that. Yeah, so like you said, what if I have a custom report? Would then everybody get it? No. Um, that's one thing we want to talk about is how do we support one-off requests? How do you even charge for that? Like, is there a way to generalize it? Or that's why there's still these other solutions. Like, we're not going to tell people, use us, don't use commerce reports, because one, that's my baby. Like, that was my introduction. I'm so excited to finally get to work on it. They all have a purpose and a need. If you have a very specific business case, you probably want commerce reports to turn your order data, your product data into this like denormalized fashion and process it. Um, but if you have a, the company wants a generic sales dashboard, you know they could use this and then you write them their business reports using commerce reports or anything like that. Um, so there's a blend of ways that you can use it. Is that answer? Yeah. yeah. It's new, so you got to figure it out. Yeah. And that's one where, you know, Drupal Commerce is built off of consulting and performance consulting and then revenue or part, partner revenue. And this is our one way to try to build a sustainable model that helps serve our users and grow the platform and also ensure that we can keep developing. Any other questions? Yeah. Uh, what versions of Drupal Commerce uh, do these modules plug into? Both. Uh, the okay. one and two. Okay. Um, so commerce reports for Drupal 7, told, I looked the other day and I'm a horrible person. I haven't tagged a release since 2015, but also it hasn't had, it says beta 3, but it's ready. It's, you know, it's good to go. I think it's missing like stock and discount reports, so I never, that's the blocker and it really shouldn't be. Commerce Google Analytics, I think is much more robust for Drupal 7. Like I think it integrates everything, which makes sense. It's been around and more used. Um, Lean Commerce reports, we have the Drupal 7 module in development. The first customer was Drupal 8, you know, so we targeted that, especially because of like the multi-store. Commerce reports, I mean, you could use it, but it's it does basic reporting right now. Um, I would say probably in a few months, it'd be even higher up. My, my main goal is to start in, and in all these, in the Drupal 8 version of the modules to start opening issues so I can start getting contributors in there instead of it being a blocker on my brain, actually writing issues and helping contributors come to our platform and be a big impact. Any other questions? Did you? No? Okay. Yeah. With Drupal, with the commerce reports module, uh, is, does it have the capability to uh, interface with a complete third-party uh, ERP system that isn't asynchronous, so we're not getting uh, confirmations back on, we submit an order, we're not getting confirmations back, the order is complete. Yeah, okay, so the, individual orders, like it doesn't have that level of flexibility yet. So the question was about when you're integrating with a third-party ERP, and you know, it, basically if there would be a conflict, like if it accidentally like double reported, or, um, so how it works is we actually have an event subscriber that says, was it placed? In Drupal Commerce, there's a draft. It's a draft or it's been placed and is now in like your backend workflow. And typically once it's been placed, that's when it's been inserted in your ERP and then goes through validation and shipping, all that. We send that data when it's been placed. So technically once that order information was shipped off to your ERP, at the same time it was reported and each of these modules works that way actually. Commerce reports, that's when it generates its data. Um, Google Analytics, that's when it pushes it to the front end and sends it off, and that's also when we read it and shoot it off as well. Um, one thing that it does, and I just thought of this as a bug I need to look into. So Commerce reports and Lean Commerce reports do this trick guy setup. It, it's like big pipe after, it's not like big pipe, but there's a, there's a way to do processing after all the data has been flushed to the browser so we queue the order. It's like, okay, this order was placed, put it in this little queue, so that way the page loads and they don't go, why am I not seeing my order confirmation? And then once the data's been flushed to the browser, then we send all the, do the heavy lifting. And the idea is that way it doesn't impact your performance to that end user. Um, but I just realized that could be kind of wonky if you run a command line operation. 
because I don't know if it fires that event. So, thanks. You just helped me out go for a possible bug. Yeah. Uh, commerce report. So, in its current state right now, would you recommend getting it in so we're getting it in place and we're collecting data? So, the question is, should you get commerce reports and now start collecting data? No, because I don't consider the report schema to be stable yet. Um, so, but you could do post, you could do post processing of all those orders. I do it all the time. Like in the pet to do this slide, I, I created an order generator that created 10 to 15 orders per day for the past year. And then I ran a script that just took those orders and generated event reports for report data. Um, so I would wait because how it works in Drupal 8 is reports are actually their own content entity that just have fields. And then when the order is processed, the plugin says, I want this field, I want that field, I want this, and creates like a report entry. Um, and we have those in right now, but I think they're probably missing some important data points, or maybe the fields might be ready. So I wouldn't install it yet. I probably won't, probably when it gets that beta tag is when I would say, yeah, we're not gonna break anything. Alpha is still, field names might change. There might be data loss. Um, but b at beta, I wouldn't want to allow any data loss because to me, beta means is like RC almost. So then, uh, if I understand correctly, there's two ways to access that data. One that's going into this, you, you called it a, a report entity or report yeah. entity content type. Um, is that data going to be accessible to normal views? Yes. Um, so the question was, is that is commerce reports available to views? Yes, it is. Um, there's one big problem. Drupal 7, it used views by default for all the reports, and as a maintainer, that was horrible. Because that export, I had five files that were the views chunked out, and I had to come up with my own way to manage it. But it, it, it worked. Well, Drupal 8 threw something on top of its head, um, and Drupal 7 modules owned their config, with how C tools worked and like defaults. You provided the PHP export, and it got sucked into the website. And if it was overridden, they could revert it. Drupal 8 doesn't work like that. The site owns all the config. So if you change your default config, you have no way for somebody to easily import those changes. Um, we have a helper inside Drupal Commerce that does that, but the problem is like Core doesn't have that support. So our, our method isn't really the greatest. There's no way to visually show that to a user. Like, hey, if you click this button, you'll lose all your customizations, but you'll get our upstream changes. So I mitigate... I figured if people want custom reports and to use views, let them build that on their own, and we'll provide out of the box in code reports that are, you know, they do what people are asking for. And if anybody needs something custom, get in views, toss it in there, write documentation for it. Um, my faith is lacking on how views and cores work, or view and core views and core works. I haven't really touched views since eight one. But at that point, like aggregation was broken, and I just really kind of always went to like Twig and code for queries. Um, but I do want to give that support because even though we, even though we're doing like a product we're selling, I still want like we still believe in free and open source software. Like our product is to try to make it so you have less customization to do. Um, but we know that people want to get in the dirt and do it. Like I'm that kind of developer. Like, I still want to like do it and own it instead of buying a service, but I've, I'm slowly adjusting to like, well, I can spend my time on something else. But I do want to give full-blown support for people that want to write views. Maybe it will get better to work with it. Um, it's just I had such a bad experience in Drupal 7 and all the views and things breaking and <sighs> aggregate queries, and the problem is that to get really nerdy with it, it stores data in a Unix timestamp, but in order to do this properly, you need it to be in like a MySQL date timestamp, and then you have to format the output of it in a certain way, so that way it groups properly. And just trying to explain people how to do that in a views UI, it doesn't work. Um, although, probably if I wrote a custom views plugin, it would solve that. So, I'll write an issue for that, that we can write a views plugin to help convert the Unix timestamp into a format that makes it easier to build your own aggregate reports. So, thanks. That was actually another... Yeah, thanks. Better write it down. Yeah. No, I, I got it in here. Trust me, these... 
these are big problems that I want to solve. You know, I have huge faith in our platform, and you know, we have shipping stabilized now. There's FedEx and UPS, and well, UPS is maybe shaky. Um, I've done Stamps.com. We have recurring, recurring payments as like beta. We have licensing set up. You know, our ecosystem's maturing. This is the next step, right? It's we're, we're getting out of the like hack and slash, make it so people can build things now. So we need to let them do things after they've built it. Um, so that's why we're really, at least I know I'm excited to do this next push and solve this and provide this product and get these contrib to a certain maturity rate. How is stock coming? Okay, so the question was stock, um, which we can ask general Drupal, Drupal Commerce questions too. Like that's what I live and breathe. Stock is in alpha, but it's so cool. Like, so stock in Drupal 8 is going to be transactional and support warehouses. So and a lot of people think stock is like, I'm just going to update this quantity box, and then when something sells, I'm going to change it down, I'll change it up. That's not transactional, because you don't know where it was, where the inventory was remo removed from, the history of it, was it returned? Like, if there was a, bu a buy, a return, or just a general restock, you don't know what happened. Um, so it's going to be transactional. So you say, okay, we got three of these widgets from the warehouse. Okay, customer A bought 10 of them. Customer C just returned two of theirs. So you can see that history and know your actual stock. Um, I think one of the biggest blockers got merged in, um, something about stores and multiple where, I haven't been following it completely, but the people working on it are phenomenal. Um, I believe it's Steve Oliver and, oh, no, I can't remember the other gentleman's name. The other guy, he is like that's his domain knowledge. His domain knowledge is like stock and inventory management. And then we have somebody that's really good at just Drupal and, and Drupal eight, and they're just they're killing it. Um, it'll be exciting once it's polished off. Do you know uh, the namespace that's under? Is it going to be? It's just commerce stock. Underscore stock. Yeah, um, I think on the project page there's a link to the GitHub that they're jamming on. Yeah. Okay. Um, I know one thing that I was just talking to Jonathan Sasek with. He's our commerce guy. He's actually my we're the ones that built Lean Commerce Reports on the team, and we want to build a remote ERP stock. So it's like Commerce Stock Lite, almost, like where you don't need a full-blown stock implementation, but you need like a local cache of stock information, and then when somebody does add to cart, goes to checkout, it does like a hard ping to your ERP it's there. So that way you don't have to like replicate your stock information from your ERP into Drupal Commerce. You can have like this middleware almost that talks. Um, so I think that'll be next is getting stock in there. A big problem is just that most of the early adopters already had their own ERPs or all these different systems and Drupal Commerce was kind of like this thin client that gave them a web presence. Um, so as we get more people that are using it as their full stack, we'll get to get all those really rad features in. <coughs> I know it's always exciting when somebody lands a project, like we gotta drive this module forward, like yes. So um, there's gonna be a lot of those coming in the future too. So, any other questions? Yeah. Um, in terms of another ju uh, general Drupal Commerce question, uh, how are uh, abandoned carts, uh, like what would you do? That's like a big question. Yeah, so the question was about abandoned carts in Drupal Commerce. Um, we have a patch, actually, that's still probably eight months old because it was a feature when we were still doing bugs. Um, right now we don't do anything because it is a very use case-ish type thing and in Drupal Commerce 2, we've tried to do more out of the box on best practices, and that's one thing that is kind of missing. But we have a patch that I think right now just deletes them. Um, if they were like, you can customize it like delete carts that are 15 days old. Um, but that could be, it does too much, honestly, that patch. The first step back is there should be a abandoned, like an abandoned cart API. It says, I want to perform certain actions on carts that are this old. And that's actually how recurring kind of works. Recurring lets you say, at this day, at this day, at this day, do these actions. And that's how abandoned carts should work. Um, is using that interval, it should say on cron, find orders that are three days old. Try to send them an email. Um, on five days old, maybe send them an email. On 30 days, just delete it because their browser session's lost and it's gonna go into the nethers. Um, so, well, it would be great is if you made an issue about that and our queue just to help 
kind of get that conversation started. Um, because even if it doesn't land in commerce, we're doing all of our, like, our major contrib architecture and discussion in the main commerce queue, so there's one space to go. Um, and then it can either be, you know, yeah, we need to do this as a module, like, oh, maybe we can create like a loose API around it that makes it easier to do cart abandonment you know, operations. You know, we're not gonna give you how it should work, um, but we'll make it easier for you to do so. And that's one thing we're always trying to do too. We know that e-commerce requires a lot of customization. When you go to Shopify, you're forced to fit their data model. Drupal Commerce lets you kind of wrap around your use case, and we want to try to make that as easy as possible and allow you to just insert your business logic here. Like you have a checkout, you might need a, a digital checkout and a physical checkout. You don't want to have to worry about how that gets built. You just want to at some point say, if it has an ebook in it and no, nothing else, go here. You just want to write that little switch. Um, so yeah, open an issue. I would love to see us come up with some kind of like abandonment, re like recurring interval type API that lets you write maybe just a plugin that says my cart abandonment plugin. And that, this interval it knows to do some operation. Um, be totally open to that. Cool. Yeah. Um, for the Drupal 7 release, I've worked with the commerce reports and the commerce reports. Do they support uh, translation in the reporting? So the question was about translations. It's always a pain to so. Yeah, I know. Um, commerce reports, I think. Commerce reports queries the active data, which is also a problem there, because if you change your product title later down the road, <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure that's pretty vol volatile. Um, but Lean Commerce reports, what we do, and this is also what's being done in Commerce reports for Drupal 8, is we take the order item title. So if they purchase a translated product title, that's how it shows in their cart, that's how it got recorded. So if you have a multinational site or multilingual, you would be able to do a, let's see, where's the example here? So the top products, right? So here I see, you know, Commerce has hoodie, cyan small, Drupal card shirt, cyan small, hoodie, cyan large. It shows the product with its attributes that they bought it from an international store. Um, it would have its own entry here and do its own grouping and counts. So that's how the Commerce reports would work. That's how Commerce reports works on Drupal 8. Drupal 7, don't remember. Because I think it might be querying the actual product table, which means that if you changed it, or if it was translated, it's gonna pull from like your admin language code. Oh, which is a huge pitfall. Um, yeah, sorry. <laughs> I think there's a reason translation's in code. Yeah, and so like I said, there's a lot of hard problems, and that's one reason we made a product is, you know, there's so much hard crap out there when it comes to e-commerce. We want to try to make it a little bit easier and say like, hey, we know a bit about this. Let us help you with it. So. I'm just wondering why you made that decision because it's the same hoodie. It's say like I have one location I'm shipping them from mm -hmm. and I have it in three languages. So, I mean, but, it's... It was a decision. Yeah, well, because you might have different SKUs for each one. So there, if, if your translation has different SKUs, Commerce Reports will identify those as different then. Because I'm pretty sure the SKU isn't volatile. Like, because it, it does aggregation off line items. <coughs> okay. And the line item label is a SKU, and then it queries that current product label. So it should be unique. That might be one reason. If, you're, if your hoodie, you know, t-shirts don't really fit into that use case. It's more of probably different use cases it fits in more of but like let's say you know I got this this is from Actualis the French company this had a different skew than if we sold it in the United States for whatever reason okay. because it I came from a different if, if I put it in as a different skew yes. yeah that would be the big I use case um, you know maybe that's something that could be configured like well group by skew and not the product name I don't care if it was translated you know the same skew shouldn't show up in three different rows because it's in three languages um, take that into consideration because that is definitely a bug. But some people might want that. They might not care about it. See, this is why I like this. I like it. It's not simple. Yeah. So, that's what I got. I think it's lunchtime. If, unless there's any other questions. Lunchtime. Go get some food.